Instant Replay is your local sports bar. With 18 big screen TVs, we have all the sports packages from college games to pro games. We offer daily drink specials and come check out the bullpen, our newly renovated beer garden. Instant Replay, 2739 Chestnut in Quincy. Hey everybody, welcome to the Daily Muddy. I'm Ashley Conrad. Joining me today, Bobby Stevens with the Hannibal JCs. Welcome, Bobby. Thank you. Of course. So uh, we're talking today about adoptive family, uh, which I think a lot of people know is prevalent around Christmas time, uh, but it's relatively new to the Hannibal JCs. Is that correct? Yes, we started our adoptive family program in 2021 after we've seen a need in our communities um, because other programs they used to be about kids but then they've due to lack of funding or they've evolved to where it wasn't really about the kids um, or the family dynamic and so for us we wanted to see those pictures of those kids smiling and be able to you know to donate back and give to our community absolutely so uh, yeah it kind of evolved into focusing on necessity versus kind of the fun of Christmas, right? Yes. And when you say we decided, I'm going to go ahead and give you some props here because you are the one who brought this to the Hannibal JCs, right? You were like, hey, there's a need. Yeah. What'd you say? What'd you, you said, let's, <laughs> instead of talking about yeah, it. To, instead of talking about it, be about it. That's right. And, um, so me and a group of us, uh, Emma Dooley, Amanda Brown, we all, we run the Hannibal JCs Haunted House, um, the year that we decided this we did and you know as it evolves over years you know our younger generation steps in takes over haunted house but and it's the same with this however um we we just felt like instead of everybody else doing it why don't we do it absolutely and so like a portion of the proceeds from our haunted house goes donated towards this program um and then this year I decided to do a fundraising event. Um, and with that, I decided, you know, my husband and I are auctioneers here in the community. Why not focus on what we know and try and host an event to help raise money to make it bigger to be able to adopt more families? Yeah, because you said, which I love, uh, I love the idea of growing something that is no doubt uh, very impactful and uh, appreciated appreciated by communities and you said you mentioned Quincy Palmyra and Hannibal right yeah we yeah. donate and I think last year we even donated a family from Monroe City okay um and then also we don't just adopt families we adopt um individual we have adopted individuals as well okay and uh so you mentioned last year you had six families is that right we had eight families eight families last okay year. okay and you're trying to grow that. There's not necessarily a goal, but of course you want to impact as many as you can. Yes. With the economy, just kind of the way that it is, I mean, the the need is so greater than what we can emphasize. And our goal is, you know, we did eight families this year. I would love to do 12, 16, 20. Yeah. I mean, however many families we can help. Absolutely. Shoot for the stars. Uh, so that being said, you are holding a fundraiser, which is, uh, you know, the meat and potatoes of why you're here. Mm -hmm. We want everybody to come out and support this great cause, support the Hannibal JCs. Uh, it is the adopt a family fundraiser first annual. So let's make it a solid benchmark, right? We're yeah. going to make it, we're going to give a solid foundation. Uh, it's at the Hannibal, Hannibal Elks Lodge which it does, so you guys work together. Mm -hmm. So the JCs puts it on, but the Elks is kind enough to let you host there. Is that right? Yes. Um, a lot of our Hannibal Elks members, a lot of them have formerly, formerly been um, JC members, but the Elks Lodge also adopts a couple families from us too. And so we just seen the need that, hey, we can work together sure. to impact our community. Absolutely. So um, the event is, well, let me, you tell me about the event because you probably know all about <laughs> it. I don't have to read it off there. The, the event is going to be on September 28th. Um, our idea is to have a meal. Um, we'll We'll have like a cocktail hour at okay. 4.30 and then we're having a, a catered meal. Um, so far we have 
the country butcher shop in Palmyra is generously donating meat and the rubble pig is donating a side item as well. And then we're hoping with other donations from our community that we can help uh, bring this fundraiser together, but also it's just going to be like a simple dinner, pulled pork, mac and cheese, baked beans. Um, there'll be a silent auction, a live auction. Um, I think we're talking about doing a 50, 50 raffle. We haven't really decided on okay. that yet, but, um, the mill itself will be at six o'clock now with it it is kind of reserved seating there because they only hold probably 125 people okay and so with that we do encourage people to buy their tickets in advance sure. uh, you don't have to pay for them in advance you can pay for them at the door um but just because seating is limited yeah with it and we, do, we don't want a chance, you know, you're not getting a seat if you do want to support because mm -hmm. I have no doubt this is going to be a great event. Um, because, I mean, everybody cares about the kids, oh, right? Yeah. Everybody cares oh, about the yeah. kids and the families and wanting to uh, make sure everybody enjoys their holidays, even through, like you mentioned, the economy sucks. Everybody's struggling. Yes. Uh, you know, it's just, it's rough on everybody. So if you can take a break and help out a little bit, every dollar counts, show up, support, right? Yeah. So you mentioned live auction. This was intriguing to me. So you're auctioneers? Yeah, I, I'm i an auction manager. My husband is an auctioneer. We actually work with Mitch Webster with Webster Auctioneers. Okay. Uh, we do like Beerstown, Quincy, Hannibal. Yeah. Area, so. Well, I wish I wish he would have come on because I could. I, I love to hear the auctioneer, but maybe that, we'll save that for another day. But live auctions are always fun. Yeah. Uh, and then when you have a legit auctioneer, it makes it even that much oh, more yeah. fun, right? And then you have um, the silent auction that you mentioned. So I'm sure as with every... Uh, auction silent auction there's something for everyone oh yeah um so far our main live auction item that we have so far because we're still taking donations okay and everything up until even the day of the event um i do have two st louis cardinal tickets Ooh. um that'll be a live auction item um and then shane wayne's ears just perked up <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we do have several baskets already donated from like photographers uh Kay Carroll's out of Palmyra, Bridget Bly with Bly Construction, they've already donated um, a silent auction basket. Um, the Engraved Hive, which is here in Quincy, uh -huh. they've donated some items as well. Yeah, so, I mean, we love when a community steps up and shows up for one another, and I love that you're pulling this together to to give back. Uh, it's just, a, it's an all-around great cause. Um, so, when you are talking about the auction, so cocktail hour from 4.30 to 6, dinner at 6.30, what mm -hmm. time does the live auction start? Yeah. Just depends? Uh, we really haven't set a time. Okay. I'd say I'd say probably 7, let people eat, and then probably about 7 we'll do the live auction. Perfect. And kind of end the silent auction. Excellent. So, um, yeah, and then you'll have DJ, right? You got mm -hmm. music. You music. Got, yeah. You got music, you got booze, you got prizes or auction items, you <laughs> yeah. got uh, adoptive family giving back to the community at the Elks for the JCs, for the community. What else What else do you need, right? Yeah. Right? So mark your calendar for September 28th. Get your, um, get your tickets, get your reservations because like she said, um, it's going to be limited, right? Mm -hmm. And we hope that it sells out. Uh, I, I'm shooting for 80, but I hope it sells out. I hope it sells out. We're, we're going to shoot for the stars. And if you're interested in donating auction items, whether silent or live, um, reach out to Bobby, right? Mm -hmm. How would they get a hold of you? Um, they can email the JCs. I'm on Facebook. Okay. I'm on if you if you can't find her, you're not looking hard <laughs> enough. Get a hold of us. We'll I, we'll help you find her. Yeah. But yeah, so Hannibal JCs um, putting on first annual Adopt a Family. Get out there and support September uh, 28th. Give them time to get those gifts. Get them wrapped. And one last thing, you're always looking for volunteers for the JCs and yes. for this um, event specifically, right? For mm -hmm. for wrapping and buying and um, yeah, shopping, which is. That's half the fun too, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, Bobby, thank you so much. Thank um, you. Good luck with the event. I have no doubt it's going to be successful. So get out there and and let's help make this first first annual Adopt a Family a success, right? Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Coming up, Britt B and Ash C and Coffee Talk. The Tower, a great place to meet and eat. But did you know the Tower has one of the finest drink selections in our area? Along with its incredible Mexican menu, the Tower specializes in tequilas for every taste. Names like Patron, Cabo Wabo, and Hornitos. And don't forget the margaritas. 
On Mondays and Tuesdays, stop by and pick up a single topping pizza and get Tower Margaritas to go. Enjoy the Tower at home or in our dining room, bar area, or the Tower's signature climate-controlled porch. The Tower Pizza and Mexican in Quincy. Are you looking for the perfect venue for your next special event? Check out Utopia Event Center. Utopia has a large banquet room and an awesome bar area, perfect for anything from birthday parties to formal corporate meetings. It also offers a photo booth, stage for a DJ or a live band, and a fully stocked bar, all for only $300. Check us out at utopiaeventcenter.com or call Barn at 217-430-6559 for more information. Utopia Event Center, 900 North 12th Street in Quincy. Kelly's has been a fun place to eat and drink in Quincy since 1982. A fun and friendly atmosphere, food with flavor, homemade cinnamon rolls, and famous cheese soup. The best menu in town. Kelly's 2902 Broadway, Quincy. The Liquor Booth is your home for a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits. The Liquor Booth has two locations in Quincy, 3520 Broadway and 1500 North 12th Street. The Liquor Booth, where it's always happy hour. Welcome to the Abbey, a Quincy tradition. With six big screens, a new larger kitchen, and now more seating capacity, the Abbey is the place to be before, during, and after the big game. Come enjoy fan favorite appetizers, steaks, burgers, and a variety of daily food and drink specials. Can't join us? Carryout is available too. Now with a convenient drive up window to better serve you. 1736 Spring in Quincy. Opens at 3 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Come join all your friends at the Abbey, a Quincy tradition. Instant Replay is your local sports bar. With 18 big screen TVs, we have all the sports packages from college games to pro games. We offer daily drink specials and come check out the bullpen, our newly renovated beer garden. Instant Replay, 2739 Chestnut in Quincy. And welcome back. Now it's time for Coffee, Coffee Talk. Talk with Ash C, Britt B, and EFB. Thank you, EFB, for the sponsorship. Uh, always great coffee. Always a great time. And the atmosphere is amazing. And yes. now that the street's almost done. I know. It's beautiful. Ooh, ooh, it's going to be a great time to go visit EFB um, if you haven't already, which yeah. you definitely should. Uh, not a lot on the docket today, huh? Mm -mm, it's kind of quiet. I like it. Is. It. it is. Uh, but it's not necessarily... I mean, just because it's quiet in... Uh, the news news that mm -hmm. what we normally talk about city council and stuff like that means that there's always something we can talk about. I yes. Think. Okay. So hit me with uh, topic number one. Well, first I want to say that we have gotten a lot of good feedback on the discussion that we had regarding party politics at the local level. Yeah. Yeah. We so, don't need the D. Is that what you said? Yeah. Or, <laughs> stop focusing, stop on, focusing the on, the on the D. Okay. Which <laughs> I still stand by that. I Stop focusing too. on the D and your R. Yeah. And let's hear your policies. Right. We still need that certain someone to come up to council and propose this um, outside of media, I think. So is that, could that just be me? I mean, technically you could. Yeah. I don't know if Bob would like that. No, probably not. But um, yeah, I think anybody can do it. Okay. It's, when I say it has to be a special person, it does have to be someone where you don't have a vested interest in this. Yeah. You know, you're doing this for, or you're suggesting this for the right reasons. Yeah. I mean, I think the vested interest is, uh, yeah, getting rid of community or having it like a stronger knit yeah. community. Getting rid of I the think. person and focusing on the people. Uh, so yeah, I think it, it does take um, a very self-assured person mm -hmm. and someone who isn't affiliated with either party. Yeah. Right. Which there are probably plenty of those folks running around yes. Quincy. So there you go. There's our call to, there's our bat signal. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep calling. Yeah, right. There's our bat signal. And then also in the news today on the site, um, there was a letter to the editor. It was by Robert McGee. Uh -huh. He explained how the Quincy Police Department took part in a training, like almost like a, I think a SWAT like session yeah um, it's like a SWAT exercise yes. throughout the schools to and they, you, yeah they went to all the schools which I think is neat it's yeah sad that we have to do this but at the same time as a parent um the it's precaution. the world we yes. live in and it's kind of one of those things it doesn't go away if you ignore it so yes. you are better off being prepared Mm -hmm. um, which also brings up another, you know, just safety in general for school age kids, um, whether they're walking or, you know, riding the bus, just go over things that you think might be 
a duh moment, <laughs> right? Like sit down, don't don't be walking around the bus when it's moving. Don't let people come up to you and say, hey, I'm here to pick you up for your mom. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we did with our kids, just a quick tip, um, of course, you want to talk to your kids about stranger danger and don't go pet any random puppies in the back of a van, right? Not making light of it, but just saying. Um, but Luke and I, um, we created a safe word for our kids, which basically helps in the situation that someone does come up to uh, Nora or Claire and say, hey, your mom told me to come and get you. I know her name is Ashley and she works for blah, blah, blah. You want We created a safe word That's that... Smart the person who's saying that has to know it. And both of my girls know anyone who says that they ask the safe word. And this safe word is not told to anyone and has never been. And it's been in our family for probably seven years now. And I ask them, I quiz them random, randomly on what it is and they mm -hmm. both know it. So it's something that sticks with you. So I recommend picking a safe word, picking something that is, um, you know, something that is meaningful to you guys, but that no one else would know. It's just one more extra level yes. of safety i think um and then yeah just having conversations to make sure that your kids are safe when they're going to school at school and coming from school mm -hmm. and that also includes don't run your mouth as a 14 year old in a new school because <laughs> you may get punched right oh. so like teaching them <laughs> like you know that you're in a different you're in a different pond now you're mm -hmm. the little fish in the big pond so sit back and spectate and kind of feel your way through it before you go in all high and mighty, right? Uh, I mean, making a name for yourself is good Right, too. I guess that's I true, don't yeah. Know. Confidence is one thing. Yeah. Uh, cockiness is something true. totally different. So I'm like, walk in with your head held high, but do not. Um, so what you're saying is, <laughs> did she go in there? No, but punched? she has this attitude that's like, no, she, no, I'm not letting that happen. This is how it's going to work. And I'm like, you better throttle it back, sister. Mm -hmm. There's a way to tactfully have a conversation yes. with people. And that means students, teachers, coaches, bus drivers, deans. I mean, communication is key communication. in this um, school year, in yeah. every school year. In every aspect of your life, mm -hmm. knowing your audience Knowing how to effectively communicate, I think, is something that we need to focus more on. I think part of the lack of that has to do with our reading. Oh, yeah. Which that's also in the news. Yeah. Um, there is going to be a program. I think you're going to talk about it later next week or sometime. Um, the Quincy Public Library is doing mm. Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. I love Dolly Parton. Who doesn't so. love Dolly Parton? I know. I think... It, are you even human if you don't love? No, I don't want to know you anyway. Maybe you that's how we decipher who's an alien and there who's you go. not. Or at least a good person. Yeah. Yeah. But so that it. program is aimed towards little kids. You know, they she gives them, I think, a free monthly book up to their fifth birthday. Mm -hmm. I personally, like, had all the books, you know, up to her fifth birthday or whatever. I, we We read a lot when she was little. And then... It fell off. Yeah. I feel like she learned how to read and I trusted her to do it sometimes. Or you just kind of had this thing where you're like, yeah, she knows how to read. She'll just do it. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, I failed her. Yeah. Well, not that she can't read. It's that she doesn't like She doesn't to. enjoy it. And that's yeah. the whole part of everything is yeah. you're not going to be good at something that you don't really like in, or enjoy. Yeah. And I think it, it was, yeah, my part by maybe not, you know, observing it a little bit better. But the other thing is also providing her with a tablet or a phone or whatever it was at the time. Yep. Bingo. When Claire was um, growing up, electronics were not really as prevalent. And I was always reading to her, um, my aunts, my mom. I mean, everybody around her was always reading to her. And then the second kid came. <laughs> it was like, ah, she good. You know, I mean, we would read, but you're busy. I'm not making excuses. But there are certain reasons that reading kind of falls off, whether it's, you know, you develop this faith that they're going to do it on their own or that, you know, you think, well, hey, they enjoy it, so they're probably going to do it. You still have to encourage it. And it's the environment that you raise them in is what they learn from, yes. right? So. With Nora, of course, shame on me, uh, but I'll go ahead and be honest because I know I'm not alone. 
it was easier, especially having another kid, that when electronics came in, it was like, yeah, here, play your ABC mouse mm -hmm. or, um, you know, color on this thing. So then it became, why would I want to pick up this paper book where the illustrations are not as vibrant when I can look at this? Now, granted, ABC mouse is a great app and stuff like that, but it doesn't replace reading. So shame on me because I do think that the combination of uh, electronics and the influence from home, mm -hmm. right, is... It's more to blame for our reading scores than I think. I mean, yes, it, our school system has a part to play in it, yeah. but... I think that, so I think it all works... Our in, culture. It, it is the culture, and it's technology, and it's the sign of the times, and uh, I think our school does play a part, um, especially when they recognize that there's an issue. Mm -hmm. They, you know involve themselves earlier to try to circumvent the the negative outcome of not reading because it is something that once you hit fourth grade if you're not up to par it's very very hard do you remember the anxiety mm -hmm. that you would feel when you're like had okay, to read in front of class yeah or they're like okay we're gonna go by sentences so you're like counting down which sentence is gonna be <laughs> yours and trying to memorize it or make sure there's no words I screwed up so many words it was like traumatizing yeah you know that's probably where my anxiety started. I still screw up so many words. I do too. And then I just claim uh, I can make up words yeah. if I want to. Yeah. But I think if you, what's the saying? Like if somebody says something wrong, don't ever make fun of them because that means they read it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like making fun of people who are overweight for going to the gym. Mm -hmm. Like they're trying. Yeah. Right. But I remember the word I mispronounced and it was colonel. Have you ever seen that word spelled out? Mm -hmm. It's colonel. 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 Well, I was very <laughs> cocky about saying that. And everybody was like, ah, ha, ha. And that was when I was older. So, yeah, traumatizing, man. But, yeah, the reading is, it's everywhere you go. And it really does, you know, it either promotes or negates good communication. Uh, yeah. I think also, like, in my fifth grade, she, she was my favorite teacher, Mrs. Terwelp. Shout out. Yay, Mrs. Um, Terwelp. She read to us. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that necessarily still happens at that age level. I feel like it was a little bit, like, in retrospect, it kind of seems like it was older. But I think she made read. I mean, everyone talks about where the wet red fern grows yeah. because she read that to well, us. She read that to you. And then I think another one that she read to us was Hatchet. Ooh. Did you ever have to read that one? No, but I've since I didn't have to, but I like it. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the one thing that. What's the one with the dog? Um, well, where the, the lab or whatever. Oh, uh, old Yeller? old Yeller. That's it. Yeah, uh, that's something that I would be like, nah, you. I'll read that on my own, and then just wouldn't. I can't do that. <laughs> but I think reading to people is a good. It's Even, a good way to get their in, get them interested, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we were always reading that in class, and then she assigned separate, you know, take home reading. Sure. But that that aspect or that level of it, I don't know if that's still there. Like, that's a great are fifth idea. Fifth grade Brit. teachers still reading in reading, or are they teaching? Do they still have reading in fifth grade, or is it more like uh, English? And see, I don't know enough about it, but yeah, I think reading to kids is a great way to get them interested in the book. Because mm -hmm. uh, the hardest part about it, even for me, is starting a book. Yeah, and I love to read, but it's like, uh I just need to pick it up and start. So maybe we need to. I think that's a great idea, yeah. Brittany. Well, great idea, Mrs. Turwell. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, thank you, Mrs. Turwell. Let's <laughs> let's get that going again if it's not already. So when is the – there's a program that they're talking about, and this was from the Reverend? Because I know he kind of started this discussion based on the reading scores. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about not that. Sure about I know that. they're working on things. But they're... this is primarily like the Dolly Parton. Th that's just a separate. Gotcha. Um, it's through the Quincy Public Library. Gotcha. She chose, I mean, they they reached out, I'm sure. Yeah. But the fact that it was chosen and it's here in Quincy is a big, big deal. deal. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool if she visited? Uh, yeah. Dolly! Please come. We're sending up the, the cowboy hat for signal for you. We need to figure out you. who's an alien and who's not right yeah <laughs> i think everybody would go see dolly yeah 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 that would be awesome well yeah let's maybe that'll be the book it you know you, you reach <sighs> so many books and then you get to meet and then your parents get to meet dolly so then the parents will really push it to That's happen awesome is there still the bookmobile now that you said book it they're going they're trying to revive that as well that's a good idea too because i know book fairs 
and I'm guilty of this too, when you go to the book fair, you're like, ooh, I need that poster. Yes. And I need that cool highlighter. And the book always took, you know, like it was second string. Mm-hmm. But I, I, when I send my kids, I'm like, you have to at least get one book. You can get one fun thing, but you have to get one book. You're nice. I do not let them get the fun thing. No? no. Oh, my God. See, I feel like you have to make them excited about going and then – I think Nora picked a book about puppies or something, mm-hmm. but still a book. Yes. Yeah. Still getting, still getting her interested. So <coughs> I think it's just, it does start at home getting them interested, but then also gauging their interest and their ability throughout, um, whether at home or at school is something that's everyone's responsibility. Yeah. yeah. So, and then communication of course is our responsibility and, Hopefully every other adult is, you know, realizing how important it is to not only communicate, but communicate effectively. Yes. Because otherwise it all just gets lost. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think on that note, I mean, did we... That was great. Yeah, I think so. Well, hopefully everybody else enjoyed it. And if not... Uh, hopefully you go, <laughs> hopefully you go enjoy some <laughs> EFB. And if not, and, and what? If not, <laughs> well, uh, call somebody who cares with some effective communication, yeah. right? No, yeah. I'm kidding. Uh, go to EFB, check out their coffee. Thank you again, EFB. Thank you, Britt B. This Thank was an you, awesome Ashley. coffee talk. talk.